Chapter 25: Statistical Thermodynamics, Section 25.4: Vibrational Partition Function and Energy. For a diatomic molecule with the harmonic oscillator approximation, the vibrational energy levels are this: h nu times n plus half. N can be zero, one, two, three, four, etc. When n is zero, we have the zero point vibrational energy, which is one half h nu. For convenience, we use the zero point vibrational energy, one half h nu, as the zero reference. The vibrational energy levels now become just n times h nu. N is zero, one, two, three, etc., relative to one half h nu. The diatomic vibrational partition function is therefore the sum of e to the power of negative n h nu times beta. Beta is one over k b t. It's easy to evaluate this. We first expand the sum to be one plus e to the power of negative h nu beta plus e to the power of negative two h nu beta plus e to the power of negative three h nu beta, etc. Both sides of this equation multiplied by e to the power of negative h nu beta. We'll get this: e to the power of negative h nu beta times the sum is equal to e to the power of negative h nu beta. So this one becomes this.、Uh, e to the power of negative one h nu beta becomes e to the power of negative two h nu beta. E to the power of negative two h nu beta becomes e to the power of negative three h nu beta. And over here, this becomes this, etc. And if you examine the sum of this, it's simply、uh, the sum of this minus one. So it's just this series is simply this series minus one. The second term here corresponds to the first term. Third term is the second term. Fourth term is the third term, etc. So we got this equation. And look、uh, over here. This is simply q, and this is simply q. So really, we have e to the power of negative h nu beta times q equals q minus one. Or you can say one minus e to the power of uh, e uh, minus h nu beta. So over here, I can simply combine this sum and this sum times e to the power of negative、uh, h nu beta. I can do this. This whole thing is just one.、Uh, if you look at this on the left. Is equal to this on the right, and then the sum is simply one over one minus e to the power of negative h nu beta. So the summary says if we use the zero point vibrational energy as the zero reference, all we have the vibrational partition function for a diatomic molecule. It's just one over one minus e to the power of negative h nu beta. Beta is the reciprocal of k b t, and we did make the harmonic oscillator approximation in the derivation. Again, the vibrational partition function of a diatomic molecule is this one over one minus e to the power of negative h nu beta. For a nonlinear polyatomic molecule with n atoms and three n independent coordinates. There are three translational modes, three rotation modes, and therefore three n minus three minus three. That's three n minus six vibrational modes. Ah,、uh, the total vibrational partition function for such a nonlinear molecule is then this: the product of all those terms for different vibrational modes. You know, we have three n minus six vibrational modes. For a linear molecule with n atoms and three n independent coordinates, there are three translational modes and only two rotational modes. Therefore, we have three n minus three minus two, which is three n minus five vibrational modes. So the vibrational partition function of a linear molecule is the product of all those terms for all different vibrational modes. The vibrational partition function can be used to determine the average vibrational energy at temperature T relative to the zero point vibrational energy, which is half h nu, for each vibrational mode.、Uh, how do we get the thermal correction for the vibrational energy? It's this: 
the average of opportunity energy is negative d l and q over d beta. But again, after you calculate this, you need to add the zero reference, which is half h nu, as the uh, zero point vibration energy over here. In this equation, since we're about to get the average vibration energy, we need to use the vibrational parting function here. The vibrational partition function of a diatomic molecule with only one vibrational mode is this. The Q is equal to 1 over 1 minus e to the power of negative h nu beta. Nu is the vibrational frequency, beta is the reciprocal of kBT. We're going to use this equation. The average energy is negative d L and Q over d beta. So we're just evaluate this. And we plug in the expression of Q. We get this. The negative sign disappears because this 1 minus e to the power of negative h nu beta is on the bottom in this fraction. So we have this one. And then how do we evaluate this? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to use Chen rule. So first, it's logarithm. So we need to have the reciprocal of this part. So it goes here. And we copy this exponential function here, and then we take its uh, the first derivative of the exponential term, uh, which is negative h nu, and then negative h nu multiplied by uh, another negative sign. So that's uh, why we got this expression. The average vibrational energy is h nu times e to the power of negative h nu beta over one minus e to the power of negative h nu beta. And it can also be simplified to this. If we multiply the denominator and numerator by the same exponential function, e to the power of positive h nu beta. And then this becomes 1. And then on the bottom, it becomes this, e to the power of h nu over kBT minus 1. So over here, this is the uh, vibrational energy at temperature T relative to the zero point vibration energy, which is uh, one half h nu. Together, the average vibrational energy at temperature T is this the zero point vibration energy, one half h nu, and then plus this part, so called uh, thermal correction. Uh, one over e to the power of h nu over kBT minus one times h nu is the thermal correction for the vibration energy. When temperature approaches zero, uh, you can see this part approaches infinity, and this second term vanishes. We have the um, average vibration energy approach one half h nu when temperature is zero k. The vibration energy at zero k is the so-called zero point vibration energy, and over here zero point means the lowest possible. So zero point vibration energy means lowest possible vibration energy, which is just one half h nu. The molar vibrational energy is just uh, one half h nu multiplied by this Avogadro constant. At room temperature, kBT is uh, 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23 joule per Kelvin times 298 Kelvin. This is roughly four times 10 to the power of negative 21 joule. For a typical vibrational wave number, uh, usually uh, the wave numbers are between several hundred to several thousand. So I'm going to just say 1,000 wave numbers is typical. And we can compute the energy corresponding to this wave number. H nu is hc omega. And we can just plug in all the numbers, you know, the value of H, the value of C, uh, the value of omega. Uh, over here, this is uh, actually, uh, uh, actually, over here, this is, this is supposed to be HC over lambda. And I'm using um, omega here to denote 1 over lambda, the wave number. Uh, but anyway, the calculation is correct. You get 2 times 10 to the power of negative 20 joule. So you can see this is 4 times 10 to the power of negative 21 joule. This is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 20 joule. And this is about 5 times this. So for a typical vibrational wave number, 
uh, h nu is about 5 kBt. So when we evaluate this, uh, 1 over e to the power of h nu over kBt minus 1 is roughly 0 0.007. So now you can see at room temperature the vibrational energy, the average vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule is 1 half h nu. Uh, this is the zero point vibrational energy plus some thermal correction. The thermal correction is only 0 0.007 h nu. So this number is really close to just 0 0.5 h nu. The thermal correction to the vibrational energy is often negligible at room temperature. Unless the vibrational wave number is much smaller than 1000 wave numbers. Now here's another example. If you have a small vibrational wave number, let's say around 200 centimeters at room temperature, and then we do the same calculation, 1 over this minus 1 is 0.6. All right, so it's 1 over e to the power of 1 minus 1. So e to the power of uh, 1 is 2 point, uh, roughly 2.7. And then you do this, it's 1 over 1.7, roughly 0.6. Well, in this case, the thermal correction is very significant. The average vibrational energy of this diatomic molecule is one half h nu, plus the thermal correction, which is 0.6 h nu. In total, it's going to be 1.1 h nu. So, when we are talking about vibrational energy, the thermal correction can be in insignificant. Uh, if the vibrational mode has a large wave number, such as a thousand wave numbers, all right, but uh, the thermal correction can be important. Uh, if uh, the vibrational wave number is small, for example, two hundred. In between, we we'll have to just uh, make uh, you know individual decisions. Uh, I would say if the wave number is uh, more than four hundred, and then this is pretty small because we're looking at one over e to the power of two minus one. It's uh, fairly small. So uh, as long as the wave number is above 400 or 500 wave numbers, I think we can assume this thermal correction is small. Again, the vibrational modes with small frequencies make more significant contribution to the average vibrational energy. It seems kind of intuitive, but really molecules more likely appear in higher vibrational energy levels when the vibrational energy spacing are small. When the temperature is very high or when the frequency is very small, we may have this kind of inequality. KBT may be much greater than H nu. Again, if you have really high temperature or really low frequency, you have this. In this case, h nu over kBt approaches zero. And now let's use Maclaurin expansion of exponential function. It's uh, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. In this case, we can evaluate this using the truncated Maclaurin expansion of e to the power of x. We'll just cut it here, just 1 plus x e to the power of x is roughly 1 plus x, if x is small. Uh, you can verify this yourself. e to the power of uh, 0 0.01 is roughly 1.01. Now we're going to use uh, this approximation. e to the power of h nu over kBt minus 1 is very close to h nu over kBt, if h nu is much smaller than kBt. Well, in that case, uh, we have uh, the average vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule, one half h nu plus the thermal correction. And the thermal correction says this part is h nu over kBt, and then you have h nu divided by h nu over kBt is just kBt over here. Therefore, the thermal correction to the vibration energy is kBt at very high temperatures, or if the frequency is really low. Uh, also, we need to assume the molecule is a harmonic oscillator, and it does not dissociate at very high temperature. Each vibrational mode contains kinetic energy 
uh, one half kBT on average, and also potential energy, one half kBT on average at very high temperatures. So in total, you can say vibration energy is kBT at high temperature, and 50% is kinetic energy on average. 50% of kBT is potential energy on average. The molar vibrational energy of a harmonic oscillator at very high temperature is this. I've got a constant times the zero point vibrational energy, one half h nu, and then plus RT because kb times I've got a constant is r. Now let's look at these two terms. The first term is from the zero point vibrational energy. And the second term is the thermal correction if kBT is much greater than H nu. The vibrational Pauline function of a polyatomic molecule with more than one vibration mode is this. The Pauline function is the product of all those terms. And nu sub i is the frequency of the ith vibration mode. Beta is the reciprocal of kBT. D vibrational energy is the sum of the zero point vibrational energy and the thermal correction. So we have a sum here, the average vibrational energy of a poly atomic molecule is the sum of one half h nu plus one over e to the power of h nu over kBT minus one times h nu. And you need to do this for every single vibrational mode. So for example, if you have water, there are three vibrational modes. So you're going to have three such sums of zero point vibrational energy and thermal correction. For the symmetric stretching, asymmetric stretching, and also bending in water. At zero K, uh, we have a very simple equation. The vibrational energy is simply the sum of one half h nu i. So nu sub i is the frequency of the ith vibrational mode. At very high temperatures, assuming the molecules are harmonic oscillators, the thermal correction becomes kBT. And this is uh, independent of the frequency. It's just kBT. So the vibrational energy of a polyatomic molecule at temperature T is going to be the sum over all vibrational modes. And for each mode, we have one half h nu plus kBT. This nu sub i is the frequency of the ith vibrational mode. And over here, this kBT is independent of the frequency. Again, there are two terms. The first term is the zero point vibrational energy uh, for each vibrational mode. The second term is the thermal correction uh, when h nu sub i is much smaller than kBT.